Hello and welcome to worship today. I'm here at one of the most uh, favorite places I've got is the, my mom's garden at the lake. Just to bid you a happy Independence Day Sunday and to welcome you into our online worship. We've got a special worship coming up today with a special sermon from Pastor Aaron Madsen, who is our companion synod person on the synod level, our state level. And so we're really excited to hear what he can say to us and tell us about the missions that we share together in Nicaragua and Cameroon. But we're glad you are with us today and we welcome you. We always begin our worship with a time of confession and forgiveness. And so today I remind you that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. That we have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved God with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And people of God, Jesus Christ loves us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for us, God forgives us all of our sins. So as a called and ordained minister of the Church of God, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of them in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to set out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandal, and greet no one on the road. Whoever's house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in the peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, 
Whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Wherever you enter a house and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you and cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of heaven has come near to you. But whoever enters a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe out in protests against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a fla flashing of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, today we have a real treat because it is a holiday weekend and um, because a lot of pastors are trying to take time off and things like that, our South Dakota Synod has sent for us a special sermon. The person that has given the sermon is Pastor Aaron Manson. And I'm very excited for you to hear from him as he tells about things that he has learned as our companion synod person, which is the Acts person chapter that... one. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him up out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the reading from Acts uh, that I just read, before Jesus' ascension, he leaves the disciples with one last instruction. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the story of the book of Acts and the story of Christianity is how the Holy Spirit given to the disciples in Pentecost and to each one of us in our baptism has worked through ordinary people like those first disciples and like you and me to share and spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Whenever we say the Apostles' Creed, one of the things that we say that we believe in is the communion of saints. Growing up every Sunday in worship, when I'd say those words, along with the rest of the congregation, mostly adults, um, I would say them, but like many churchy words and phrases, I wasn't quite sure what they meant. As I got older, I learned more about what it meant, including that one aspect of what that means is that we are united as the body of Christ with all other Christians around the globe. In South Dakota, part of what that means is that we are church together, not just with our siblings in Christ across South Dakota, but with our siblings in Christ around the world, including our companion synods of Nicaragua and Cameroon. Since becoming your companion coordinator, I have been struck by just how deep our relationships with our companion synods are and how enriched my own walk of faith has been by being more intentional about learning about these relationships and what they mean to us as we are church together. One of the challenges that I have found over the past year or so as your companion synod coordinator is how to make sure that we and our siblings in Christ in our companion synods in Nicaragua and Cameroon feel connected to each other. From what I understand, this has never been the easiest task as we are separated by thousands of miles and even an ocean 
in the case of Cameroon. But it has been much more challenging over the past couple years as so much of our lives have been uh, complicated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which basically shut down travel by groups from our synod to and from those places for a while. The marvels of modern technology have helped some, allowing video conferencing to bridge the distance between our locations. But an even more powerful way that has helped us feel connected is a tried and true action that has been around for thousands of years and that does not require a high-speed internet connection, and that is prayer. Keeping one another in prayer can help us feel connected to the rest of the body of Christ, no matter how far away, as the Holy Spirit works through us to, as Martin Luther writes in the small catechism, gather us and keep us together with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. And even now that we can visit each other again, prayer is an essential part of helping us and our siblings in Nicaragua and Cameroon feel connected to each other always. Another powerful way to help us stay connected is sharing our stories. Maybe your congregation has hosted a missionary that works in one of our companion synods or a representative from the church in Nicaragua or the church in Cameroon. And maybe you found one of the stories that they shared to be especially meaningful or impactful to you. Well, you can share that story. Or maybe like me, you've been blessed with the opportunity to travel to either Nicaragua or Cameroon, and you can share your stories of your experiences and how you saw God at work in those places and of the relationships and friendships you have made with our brothers and sisters there. Share those stories with your families, with your friends, with your congregation, or whoever else you think uh, should hear these stories. Earlier this year, I was able to travel to Nicaragua with my wife, who is also a pastor, and Craig Sievertson of the Flandreau-based nonprofit Helping Kids Round First, which also works a lot with the church in Nicaragua. And I was able to see some of the amazing things that your support has made possible for the people there. And here are some of those stories. There are so many collective projects that we support together and the people there work so hard and have so little. These projects help them to know that they are remembered by us and are remembered by God and our beloved children of God. And it's all because you've shared some of what you, God has first given you so that these people can experience Christ's peace and love in tangible ways, like chicken coops. For families living with less than $2 a day, a chicken coop means that they and their kids will have more than just rice and beans to eat. Just one egg per day gives so much added nutritional value, especially in protein. It changes their health and changes their bodies and helps kids do so much better at school. People can also sell the eggs that they don't eat to their neighbors at accessible prices they can afford, which also just helps to multiply the effect of these projects and bringing God's goodness to whole communities. We are amazed by the ways that people are engineering their own pens for chickens and putting tried into true practices adapted to the climate of Nicaragua to work for them. We also saw how the church is raising up leaders, especially among the youth. We were able to meet with youth groups in Managua and Samoto and visit a rural elementary school as well. These youth see the needs in their lives and in the lives of their families and in the lives of their communities. And they know that through the power of God's love for us, things can and things will change through them. They are on the front lines, leading worship and preaching working to combat the effects of climate change and standing up against gender-based violence. One of the most touching moments of the trip to me was when we visited the fifth grade classroom in the rural elementary school and saw the class sing a song about how to treat one another, including and especially women and girls, with respect and how to vent frustrations without res resorting to violence at home. Of course, pastors are always learning and growing as well. We were there when the pastors met at Cedro Golan 
a facility we helped greatly to uh, make a reality, for their monthly gathering. They spent their time in large groups studying scripture and in small groups discussing how theology makes a practical difference in the lives of the people in their congregations. On one of the longest, hottest days in Nicaragua, we visited some of the most rural and remote places where the Nicaraguan church works. While we were out that day, we went to see a family who, like many, is on the edge of being able to sustain and keep the little that they have. These men have only a few acres that they plant and irrigate, and times are hard. The closest water source for this family is a stream about 300 yards away and is getting further away every year. So three times a week they have to carry this big generator to the stream and connect their hoses to water for the field. With fuel prices going up exponentially, this family is like billions around the world where gas prices are starting to make life unsustainable. When we arrived, they were in the process of asking if they should even continue to spend the money to buy the fuel to run the generator because as prices were rising, they are able to pump less water into the field. And at some point, the time, energy, and resources were just not enough to produce a good harvest. After hearing the needs of these farmers because our support and the support of our friends at Helping Kids Around First, the church was able to step in with an extra monthly financial donation to provide the amount needed to properly irrigate this field. And around the same time we were traveling to Nicaragua, pictures came in from Cameroon of a national pastors conference that our support helped make possible. And that was an essential step in the healing process of existing divisions there, especially in the wake of the election of a new bishop. And in their planning, a strategy to move forward, working together for the sake of the gospel in their country. Thank you for keeping our companion synods in your prayers and for your continued financial support of our work together with our siblings in Nicaragua and Cameroon so that all people to the ends of the earth may hear the good news of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to learn more about these relationships or are interested in the possibility of traveling to our companion synods, please don't hesitate to email me at companion-synod at sdsynod.org. You can also find out more on our synod website at sdsynod.org slash companion-synods. I'd be happy to schedule a time to visit your congregation as well to share more about our relationships with Nicaragua and Cameroon. Whether you're interested in learning more about our companion synods or in one of the other neighbors in solidarity of the South Dakota Synod, I pray that you heed the words of the men in the white robes in the story from Acts that I shared, and not just stand around looking at the sky, but instead live out our calling to use the freedom we have in Christ to share the gospels to share the gospel with our neighbors across the street and across the world to the ends of the earth. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Ready?
the Lord be with you and also with you on this special weekend. I pass the peace of Christ to you wherever you are, if it's at home or camping or as you travel, whatever it is that brings you to the word of God. Today, no, peace be with you, knowing that nothing, not even miles, can stop the peace of Christ from coming. Amen to that too. We also always remind folks of our tithes and offerings time to our God. Now we have at Hope Lutheran Church a special Venmo, which we are going to put up during this time and also during announcement times. Probably it might not get up until announcement times. I'm not 100% sure, but we will be getting um, this up for everybody so that they can uh, give from afar. Otherwise, we at Hope Lutheran Church have our regular offering times, and we also have um, a time when you can do automatic withdrawals if you're interested. Now, if you want to send things to Hope Lutheran Church, you may do so by sending them to Hope Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 886 in Summit, South Dakota, 57266. You may also do it by sending things to Florence Lutheran Parish, which has all except the Venmo over at Florence. And Florence Lutheran Parish is things are sent to New Helgen Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 5 in Florence, South Dakota, 57235. Both groups are groups of people who are doing a lot for mission in both our own communities and in our world. So I'm excited for you to be part of that mission and ministry by giving your tithes and offerings to your God. So we thank you for that. Amen. We continue then with our time of prayers to our God. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church and creation and all in need. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. We pray for missionaries who accompany your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the earth. We especially pray for our farmers, your stewards of the land. God of grace, hear our prayer. The guard of nations, let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire abundance life for all. And as we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working towards freedom for all people in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry, restore unemployment to those who have lost work, heal those who are sick, and comfort those who are dying and grieving. We pray especially today for Emery, Am Susie, Kelly, Tenley, Tina, Jean, Harlan, Linda, Wade, Corey, and all we name in our hearts who are hurting now. God of love, we also lift up to you children, those who have gone to camp and are coming back this week, and especially those who were baptized last week, Brock and Hoyt, and little Arlo, who should have been baptized yesterday. Uh, I am worse doing this before. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, filled by your Holy Spirit, we entrust those spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.